the masters of observation. Leonardo da Vinci learned more, studied more, knew more about observation and how we see than anyone in human history. To this day, he may still be the greatest master in sight. Let's have a look at one of his most famous paintings mentioned earlier today, the Mona Lisa. One of our colleagues mentioned that it was 16 years for Leonardo to paint the Mona Lisa. And in fact, the Mona Lisa is essentially unfinished, as are all the works of Leonardo da Vinci, to the point that was given in the TED Talk earlier about the originals. Leonardo, who privileged painting precisely because it can communicate in one image, in one instant, what a person could not communicate in a hundred words, a thousand words, or five thousand words. He considered it to be the most noble way to communicate and the most effective. And this, as we know, is essential for the future. So let's take a few moments to look at how Mona Lisa is painted. Why do we look at her? She is inanimate, and yet she is animated. We become inanimate as she gazes upon us. How is it that her gaze is so mysterious and appears to move as we move? Was Leonardo just having a good day? Fact is that Leonardo wrote thousands and thousands of pages, most of which have not survived, but some of which have. And we know that Leonardo had measured and studied the science of sight, the science of painting. In fact, he wrote a very, very important discourse called A Treatise on the Science of Painting. Leonardo discovered that we have two eyes, not one. We are not cyclops. And that our eyes see from two different angles. And by measuring these angles and representing with perfect precision these angles, that we can create correct perspective in art. And this is something that we see in the Mona Lisa. What does this have to do with leadership? We've all heard the word vision, and we hear people talk about it all the time. But what is vision if not the creation of an image that is so precise that all of us align with it just as we are always aligned within the gaze of Mona Lisa? This is leadership lesson number one. Let's go on to another painting and speak about creativity. Don Quixote and Sancho Panza, two of the greatest characters ever created, are more famous than their creator. The Spanish philosopher Miguel de Unamuno wrote many, many, many years later that he could not understand the lack of wisdom on the part of Cervantes that he would create characters who would become more famous and more important than Cervantes himself. Why is it that this image is so powerful? Why is it that when Picasso was asked to draw Don Quixote and Sancho Panza, he did it in the very instant in which he was asked? He was one of those procrastinators in this respect, and yet was also original. What do we see in the painting about creativity? Don Quixote and Sancho Panza are creations, but Don Quixote himself had read so many books of chivalry that they became real to him. And he created a world in which he acted that caused everyone around him to see the world in the same way that he did. This is an example of influence, another essential trait of a leader. Additionally, we have the creation of Don Quixote, of changing and transforming Sancho Panza. Who could imagine that this, this poor, fat peasant could become a great governor? Don Quixote envisioned it for him, and it became true.
in the fiction of the book Don Quixote. Pablo Picasso represents these two figures in an astonishing way. The windmills who are giants to Don Quixote become miniature in the painting of Picasso. Sancho Panza, who is a low peasant named for his fat belly, is also a giant in comparison to the windmills. Is the leader able to see windmills as giants and giants as windmills and have everyone around them see them in the same way and act accordingly? This too is an example of leadership. What about the sun in this painting? How high is it? How high is Don Quixote? Is it possible that the lance of Don Quixote could reach up to the sun, that he himself could reach up to the sun? It is a trope or a figure from Greek mythology that Icarus aspired to go all the way to the sun. And what was his fate? But to be destroyed by the height of the sun, but not Don Quixote. He is skinnily seated on his skinny Rocinante, and he is as tall as the rays of the sun. The rays of the sun mirrored in the rays of the windmills. Light and dark, dark and light, figures in black. It is an act of creativity inspired in Picasso by Don Quixote and Sancho Panza, Don Quixote inspired by the acts of creativity of hundreds of books about the knights of chivalry, inspired by Cervantes, Cervantes himself inspired by his surroundings in a prison. Who would believe that these figures were created in the depth of a prison? Leadership lesson on creativity, the leader is a person who creates Leadership is necessary in change. In order to change, creativity must be a part. So this is the next leadership lesson that we learn from the masters of observation, which is that the leader creates and indeed inspires creativity. Most of you, if not all of you, know this painting very well. And again, we can ask our question, what is it in this painting that is so relevant to us and has continued to be relevant for so many hundreds of years? In this painting, we can focus on one aspect in particular, which is trust. Trust is represented here as that space between two figures the figure of the divine and the figure of the human, they do not touch, but they trust each other. They are near each other. They know each other. And one, the human, is naked. The other, the divine, is clothed because the divine cannot ever be fully known or fully seen. It is an enormously powerful image. Trust is an essential feature for a leader because a person who inspires trust and who is trusted is a person who is able to have relationships with others as we saw in Don Quixote and Sancho Panza that allow for the possibility and the power of leadership. So much is written and so much is researched about strategy. Strategy is simply a plan. But ultimately, it is a plan in a world of uncertainty because indeed we do live in a very uncertain world. So what plan can we have that will lead us through the uncertainty? Here we have one of the most famous and popular paintings in all of Spanish history, The Surrender of Breda. This is a painting not about the act of war, but the act of defeat. So let us begin there. 
our leaders people who have failed? And the answer is yes. And then the next question is, how badly do you have to fail to become excellent at leadership? And unfortunately, the truth is, just as we saw before research about the originals, the research is the greater the fall if we survive, the greater the failure, the more likely we are to have a role of great leadership afterwards. And why is that? Why would you imagine that to be true? Because when you have had a brutal, bone-crushing, terrible failure, and you have survived it, you know that you have the resources to survive failure. Additionally, you know that you can always continue because you no longer fear what most of us fear tremendously, which is, in fact, to fail. Here again, we see the same lances and spears that we had seen indicated in the Picasso painting. We have the gesture of grace in defeat and in victory. And indeed, we see that, as my colleague Ryan mentioned earlier to me, we see that one person had a strategy that succeeded and one person had a strategy that failed. That's in the moment. Sun Tzu, without question, one of the greatest and most important writers in history, and the writer of one of the two oldest works that is continuously read, The Art of War, wrote for us probably the greatest work ever on strategy. Of the many, many, many wise statements made in that work, I will mention two. One is that the greatest act of strategy in war is the strategy that allows you never to go to war. And that is much represented here because rather than the end of a war leading to a disharmony, in this painting it leads to a harmony, which is congruent with exactly what Sun Tzu in his wisdom has described in the art of war. And the other is the power of momentum. Are we on a momentum toward war, are we on, or are we on a momentum toward peace? In this painting, Velázquez depicts the momentum of peace, which, in the view of this image, is a time of humanity. Even the horse, for which Velázquez is justly famous, is an indication of a kind of love and affection and humanity rarely seen in paintings that appear to be about war. So another leadership lesson for us here is about strategy, which is that strategy is the plan for uncertainty, and the leader has such a plan. Finally, we turn now to a painting that was shown last year in the Picasso Museum in Malaga. It's the largest painting ever created by Jackson Pollock. He created it, he was one of the originals in his time. He was asked by Peggy Guggenheim to please create a painting for her to hang up in her apartment. She was gonna have a great event to celebrate his work and he could not paint. He just could not do it. And he was very, very inspired by the Guernica of Picasso, which, as many of you know, was housed at that time in the Museum of Modern Art, being protected from what Picasso was concerned about with the political environment here in Spain. Jackson Pollock took a canvas so large that he made the floor his easel because no easel could be large enough to hold it. And it all at once, he painted this great, miraculous work called Mural, also inspired by the muralists from Mexico, Siquieros and Diego Rivera. And he paints the stampede of the American West 
with images of buffalo and antelopes and cows and horses taking the animals that he had seen in Guernica and creating this enormous feeling of energy and vitality all at once. Of course, he became famous for what would become the action painting, which is a painting made with the whole body, with the whole being, over a whole canvas. After he painted this, many other artists made fun of him for having such a large painting. And then they themselves competed with him to make paintings just as large or even larger. The leadership lesson here is, yes, you can have trust and creativity and vision and strategy, but without action, there is no leadership. And this is shown and felt in this incredibly emotional painting by Jackson Pollock. To conclude, I would like to ask everyone here a question. What is your painting? Because each of us is, in fact, a painting. We are a self-portrait, each of us, creating ourselves every day, just as Leonardo da Vinci's paintings continuously change because of the materials on which he painted. We, too, are a painting, receiving impressions from others, from the world around us, the brush strokes, the colors, the lines, the forms, the perspectives. This is we. At the same time, we are also giving image impression, acting on others, acting on the world. We are our own portraits, and we are our own masters. Thank you. <laughs>